I have a real Hammond organ here in my recording studio, right back there. That's a 1953 Hammond M3, which is going into the top box there in the corner. That is a Motion Sound Pro 3. That's the original one, the original Pro 3, which is an actually physically spinning speaker up top. And then that is outputting the low end from the Hammond signal to a regular guitar amplifier, a Fender Deluxe. So um, yeah, I have a real Hammond, but I'm not using it that much anymore. And that's because IK Multimedia recently came out with the Hammond B3X. And yeah, um, it kind of makes it so I don't really have to set up microphones for my M3 anymore. I love my M3, but <clears throat> I'm not using it for recording that much anymore, you guys. Let's talk about the IK Multimedia Hammond B3X. So just so you do know, I am using this inside of GarageBand. Uh, I know I'm not getting all of the functions out of this, but I use GarageBand, that's the deal. So if you're a GarageBand user out there, you can use this on GarageBand. I'll just give you a heads up here at the top. Uh, you wanna have the manuals set to MIDI channel 14. I'm just using the upper manual for this particular review. Uh, just so you know, it's MIDI channel 14. Plug in 14 here and it'll work. Also, there is a version of the Hammond B3X available for the iPad. So if you're an iOS user using GarageBand there, you can get this for your iPad as well. So um, I'm just gonna push play, okay? So uh, let's just push play and then I'll, sh and I'll talk about what I'm doing. Okay? Okay, so for this sample, I'm only gonna be using the top rank, just so you're aware. So like any other video, you know, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a look around here. So these are the draw bars. And you can hear them bringing in different elements of the tone. So these are the high end ones. Right? Pretty basic stuff there. Okay, so that's what the draw bars do on here. If you've never played with a Hammond, that's what it does. One of the things that I truly, truly do like about this is the fact that they have given us um, some advanced features and some controls. So let's look over at the controls because these are sort of the presets on the original B3 that you can easily access just by clicking on these icons right here. These are showing you the draw bars that are pulled out or pushed in, right? So this is just all low end stuff, as you can see here. Uh, this is basically all wide open, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna go through these just so you can hear them. And uh, I'm gonna go back to the top. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. And I'm gonna go back to the top of the song and here we go. I gotta, I will say that when you do just pull all the draw bars open on this, it, <laughs> there's a woody quality to a real Hammond B3 because the speaker is encased in wood. Um, and you can hear it. I totally think I've, you know, I've grown up listening to this sound like many of us listening to classic rock or whatever it is that has a Hammond in it. There's just that wooden tone to this electronic instrument um, that is undeniable. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so one of the things that I also really like about this is that they've given us a bunch of stomp boxes to play with. And uh, so you get, you know, basically you're looking at a tube screamer right here. It's not a tube screamer, right? We can't probably, I don't know. <laughs> Copyright reasons, they can't put that there. Uh, this is a t uh, tube screamer copy. EQ, you got a wah pedal, a spring reverb, and a chorus effect here. 
My favorite of all of these is this Spring Reverb. IK Multimedia, if you watch this video, um, you guys should totally release this Spring Reverb as an independent thing. This is a, <laughs> it's so great. Uh, so let me just dial it, well, let me just turn it on. Here, well, let's turn it off and listen to the top of the song without it. Okay, so that like chuck 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 sound, right? I'm gonna turn this reverb on now. Listen to it. Go back to the top. How great! How great is that reverb? Um, I will say this dry and wet knob, it is really dramatic. So I'm, I'm, I'm here I am at, I don't know, a little bit past nine o'clock and it's really getting wet, right? So uh, I love stuff like this, but the overall tone of this reverb, superbly fun and useful and really, really authentic to those really famous reverbs that were used on Hammond organs throughout the history. Um, anyway, here's the wah pedal, I'll just keep going. Turn on a little distortion. Probably should have said that before. Let's go back a little bit. Turn on some chorus. Vibrato. Turn that off. I'm going to turn this reverb all the way up just so you hear how great. I mean, I, I love this reverb. I know I'm going to talk about this too long. That's maxed out. Actually, this is all maxed out. It's so good. It is so good, that reverb. It is so good. Um, Ah, I can't, uh, I, I will apologize for my keyboard playing. I'm not the best player, like I said at the top. Um, but it doesn't matter. Playing with this sound, this Hammond sound, it's such a beautiful, beautiful sound. And to have one that sounds pretty much dead on accurate to me uh, is so much fun. So much fun to play with. Okay, so let's just show you a couple of the features that are worth mentioning here, because there's a ton of features here. So to make this a, you know, not a forever long video. I'm just going to show you the ones that I use the most. Okay. So when I use this thing, I like to have it on the 3300 watt amplifier. Uh, this is just the one that I like the sound of the most. If you come over here, you can actually change the cabinet. And if you go all the way left, um, this is like the first one. Let's turn the Leslie off. Um, and there you can see it slowing down. Uh, okay. So as you go to the right with this knob here, you're basically going up through time. So this is the second version of the Leslie speaker, third one, fourth one. Obviously we're getting a little more modern here and uh, even more modern, right? So you have the options and let me just let you hear these just cause I can.
right? Super, super useful. So many different tonal options there. Um, so if you're doing like really easy, like if you're doing jazz or you're doing classic rock kind of stuff or doing something more modern where you want like a nice clean organ sound, you have all of the available Leslie's in the box here and they are all very accurate. And I can say that with confidence because I've heard every single one of those Leslie's before and they pretty much sound just like that. This is the kind of thing where you're start, where you know where the technology is starting to get so good on these kinds of things that it's you know it's difficult to justify wanting to run out and spend fifty five hundred dollars on a real Hammond organ, uh, pay a bunch of people to move it up here into my house and and then maintaining it tubes for it. Uh, just in general, having a real B three is not only like a, an awesome thing. But it's a very expensive thing that requires maintenance regularly. You have to oil the keyboard and stuff, you know. Um, it's it's a machine. It's a real machine, and it needs real maintenance on a regular basis. The fact that this thing is basically, I'm going to put a percentage on it. I'll say this is about 98% of the way there. What is missing to me as a, as a player who's used these organs before is simply the touch of the keyboard. That's the last 2%. There is something to a Hammond keyboard if you've ever played one. Um, you know, they're not touch sensitive, obviously. Uh, it's an on and off switch, those keys, right? So as soon as you push down, it's on. When you take it off, it's off, right? There's no attack or decay of this signal. So the, the original keys have their own feel to them. Um, so that's the only thing that I personally think is lacking. I really wish that, hey, IK Multimedia, if you guys want an idea, you should make a controller that is just for this and and have it feel just like real Hammond organ keys because that's the only missing component to me uh, is the way that it feels when I play this particular sound. Um, but besides that, the way it sounds and the way it works in the recording studio, it's phenomenal. I have all of the ability of MIDI, right? So I can fix notes or change things later if I want, obviously. But um, so I have the power of MIDI behind this classic sound that is undeniably cool and undeniably famous. Uh, the Hammond B3X for my K Multimedia is the real thing without buying the real thing. I think that's probably the best thing I can say. It's the real thing without having to buy the real thing. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I hope it makes some sense. Um, I've used this on tons of recordings. Nobody has once ever said, hey, your synthetic B3 doesn't sound good. In fact, more people have commented on my videos when I use this sound. People are honestly thinking I'm using my M3 in my Music Monday videos. A lot of people have been like, man, your M3 is sounding really good. Did you put new tubes in it or something? And it's like, no, <clears throat> it's my B3X. It's, uh, it's not the real Hammond. I'm using this thing pretty much from exclusively from now on. So I think that's it. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, please, please, please leave them in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, if you are looking for a Hammond sound for your iPad or for your Mac or whatever you're using out there, I highly recommend the Hammond B3X. It is totally sweet, um, sounds great, super fun to work with, lots of great options, and you can't go wrong. All right, that's it. You guys have an awesome day. I appreciate you watching my videos as always. And uh, I'll be back on Monday with a brand new Monday music video. All right. Peace and love.